Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished entrepreneur from Gurgaon, India, Mr. Rahul Subramaniam. Rahul, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Ashutosh. Thank you. Rahul is the Managing Director of Athena Education. Um, and we're going to talk about Athena and a lot of things that he's doing for a lot of young people. So Rahul, let me start with uh, my first question on Athena, uh, or even before I ask you about the venture, what does Athena mean? So um, <clears throat> when uh, my co-founder and I were, uh, were in college, um, uh, we loved studying history uh, especially Greek and Roman history. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of very interesting parallels between Greek, uh, his, uh, Greek philosophy and, uh, and Indian philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, so Athena is uh, the Greek equivalent of Saraswati, the goddess of, mm -hmm. uh, of wisdom and education. Uh, curiously, she's also the... Uh, um, uh, uh, the goddess of warfare. So she's mm -hmm. the goddess of wisdom and warfare, which we thought is a very powerful image Correct. Um, in that to go through life. Mm -hmm. And education is not just about gyan that stays in the mind. It has to translate into action, mm -hmm. right? Which is an idea that's also echoed in the Bhagavad Gita. So it's very interesting to look at um, uh, these ideas across civilizations. So mm -hmm. for an education company, we, we could think of no better image. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And, uh, you know, you founded Athena to enable the Ivy dream of Indian youngsters. Um, Help me understand what was the motivation to start Athena and what has been your journey since you started? Absolutely. So, um, in fact, uh, uh, I grew up in the U.S. and mm -hmm. uh, shortly after graduating uh, uh, from Princeton, uh, we were, my co-founder and I, we were like, we need to figure out what to do with our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we... Uh, uh, we blew all our savings traveling around the world and we came mm. to India and this was around uh, 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. It was so exciting. See, my parents had left uh, uh, and I'll get to your question. I'm just mm -hmm. going to give you some background. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. My parents had left uh, India uh, with me as a baby when, uh, uh, when I was just a year old in 1990. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So their conception of India was very different from what I saw in uh, in 2012 and 2013. There was yeah. so much entrepreneurial energy here, mm -hmm. right? In terms of business, in terms of politics, in terms of uh, society, uh, a lot of the issues that uh, India has been struggling with for decades mm -hmm. since independence were coming to the fore. And of course, there is a lot of work left to be done. Um, uh, but for the first time, there was so much awareness. So I remember uh, going back to my parents and saying, uh, you know what, I'm moving to India. I'm wow. dropping everything. And they were like, what is wrong with you? Mm. You dropped everything in India to come to the yeah. US to give mm. you a better life. And we don't get it. And mm -hmm. we were very opposed to this for for a couple of years, but once uh, uh, things got going, uh, mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, they couldn't be happier. So that's the idea. We wanted to do something mm, uh, deep, meaningful, impactful mm -hmm. uh, in um, uh, in India. And in fact, we were kind of just doing this on the side while we were figuring out uh, other ventures. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a lot of colleagues um, whose kids wanted to study at um, uh, you know elite universities they mm -hmm. came to us and they said we love the way um, you know you feel that the world is your oyster mm -hmm. and um, uh, you're willing to take risks and we want our kids to have a similar mindset so we started uh, uh, coaching a bunch of teenagers and then mm -hmm. one of our mentors sat us down and said hey you really have passion for this I mean you've got yeah. Uh, you're, you're hitting all the ikigai points, right? Mm -hmm. There's some talent here. There's some passion. 
you can make money doing this and it's something the world needs. I mean, mm. how often do you stumble upon uh, an intersection of all four? Mm. So we said, okay, let's, let's build an organization around this. Mm. And I think the big difference between Athena and um, perhaps other college counselors is, um, you know, what we found was very sort of, um, it was just a checklist. Okay, mm. you got to fill out. Uh, these forms, uh, you got to take these tests and so on. That's the easy part. Mm. What we do is life coaching for teenagers. And I know life coaching has so many different connotations. Correct. Um, uh, but it's absolutely essential mm. uh, in this day and age. So it's not just about getting kids into uh, a Harvard or a Stanford or an Oxford or a Cambridge. It's about helping them become the scholars and leaders of tomorrow. Hmm. How do we help them identify what their talents are, what their passions are, what their aspirations are, their beliefs, their values, their ideals. You know, we, we talk to kids about who are you? What do you want? What mm -hmm. were you put on this planet to do? Mm -hmm. Right. What is your brand? What is your pattern? We use so many different images. Mm -hmm. um, kind of going back to um, Athena, uh, we like to take images from Western civilization mm -hmm. as well as Indian civilization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, we're very culturally rooted, but also modern. Mm -hmm. This is the mentality we want to inculcate in kids that, you know, you uh, have so many resources at your disposal. Correct. Um, and instead of, um, you know, uh, floundering, you got to think very deeply mm -hmm. about, um, you know, what is it? that you want to achieve, mm -hmm. uh, who are you, what do you want? And in that process, mm -hmm. they do very well in the college admissions, um, uh, in the college admissions process, because mm -hmm. a Harvard or a Stanford wants um, young people who are not only good academically, but who are deep thinkers mm -hmm. um, and have a vision for the world, mm -hmm. who want to change something in society and are starting to do that themselves. So we design projects for young people uh, to cultivate their leadership, their mm -hmm. social service. We find them internships. We help them get into summer programs. They launch school clubs. They launch initiatives. They write books. Mm -hmm. And that's how the transformation occurs. So it's this year, especially, we've been very direct about this. We are college counseling plus life coaching. And I think this is a model that that uh, doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're, we're trying to create this and we're very thrilled by the response we've been receiving. Amazing, amazing. So, you know, uh, Rahul, when you say that you want to enable the Ivy dream, yeah. you know, the, the Ivy League colleges have a restricted number of seats. Yes. Aspirationally, how do you handle the very, very large number of Indian youngsters who don't make it to an Ivy League. Absolutely. You know, um, yeah, getting into the Ivies is like getting a medal in the, right. um, in in the, the Olympics. Olympics getting a gold yeah. medal, mm -hmm. right? So everyone is aspiring uh, for those. And that's um, what we prepare them for. Mm -hmm. And uh, But see, they're not the only phenomenal universities uh, in the world. So... Mm -hmm. Our students um, apply to an assortment. Mm -hmm. uh, for some, mm, you know, the Ivies may not make a lot of sense because they want uh, a mm, large public research intensive uh, mm -hmm. uh, university, or they want to go for sports or art, uh, or they want uh, a, a very technical university with phenomenal placements mm -hmm. into Silicon Valley. Yep. So, most of our universities, I mean, most of our scholars are gunning for the Ivies, but there's there's a whole assortment of uh, excellent institutions. Everything we do is personalized. So we, mm -hmm. you know, um, ask them dozens of questions about what are you looking for? What's important mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. in terms of the university's brand, its academics, its location, its uh, student-teacher ratio, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Is it in a big city or a small town, US, UK, Canada? 
we take all this into account. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just a cookie cutter process. Yep. Of, okay, there, there are 10 schools here. You apply mm -hmm. here. You mm -hmm. apply there. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to really understand what a kid is looking for. You know, a kid might come to us and say, look, I, I really want to settle in the West, mm -hmm. right? In which case, mm, maybe we put more emphasis on Canada because mm -hmm. the path to permanent residency is a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. Or we say, hey, um, instead of applying for economics, can you apply for applied mathematics? So you get, so you fall into the STEM category in mm -hmm. the US. Mm -hmm. So your uh, OTP visa lasts for three years and you can work for three years as opposed to one year if you fall into the STEM category. So mm -hmm. that's the level of granularity um, uh, we get into, but it's also, it's, so we've got the, the, the technical counseling and we do a lot of research and we have extensive spreadsheets that, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. all sorts of filters. Very interesting. Help, uh, kids very, out. very interesting. But you know, Rahul, a question that is often asked, I mean, my children left home 18 years ago after school to study overseas. But, you know, a question that is often asked by a lot of people is whether going overseas a choice or is it, is it because Indian undergrad education has become so competitive that if you don't have a 99.9%, .9 you can't get a good college? Absolutely. There, there, that is a factor as well. Mm -hmm. There is a supply-demand gap, mm -hmm. right? Um, the demand for a quality education is rising much faster than mm. the supply. And there have been some efforts, there are more IITs, uh, there's uh, Ashoka, but mm, there aren't it, enough. It isn't comparable. So, yeah. of course, in the long term, mm -hmm. we would like to be part of that story. Correct. Of strengthening Indian tertiary educational um, uh, institutes. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, you know, uh, we. And this is very interesting. A, a generation ago, again, I, I look at my parents. Uh, my dad did his master's uh, mm. uh, uh, in the U.S. And he was like, okay, I'm going to do my master's here and then settle in the U.S. But what we're finding with our scholars is that mm. they want to uh, study abroad, maybe work for a couple of years. And then, and then come, come back. back to mm. India, join entrepreneurial ventures, work on pressing social issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so we hope that, and, you know, I, I love to point out that mm -hmm. that's kind of what the founding fathers of this country did, mm -hmm. right? Whether you're talking about Gandhi or Nehru or Ambedkar, they, they saw what the world had to offer and they mm -hmm. brought the best back to India and made it Indian, mm -hmm. um, you know, tailored it to our situation. Well, so, so Long term, we need to do that. In the short mm. term, uh, we're very excited about young people going out into the world, mm. uh, expanding their minds, expanding their hearts, and bringing that to India. And we're seeing that. Mm. Uh, I think when when I came to India, every other person would ask me, "What are you doing? You mm. grew up in Silicon Valley. It's uh, it's um, the Shangri La for uh, for the Indian diaspora." Mm. But I think now, uh, now it's uh, it's far more common, and we hope to see this uh, trend continue. Wonderful. So uh, let me now move on. You also have a personal mentorship program, and you spoke to me a little bit about life coaching. Uh, but I'd love to listen to you a little more about what is your personal mentorship program, and how does it assess uh, assist students. Absolutely. So step number one is understanding uh, uh, our scholars uh, mm -hmm. really thoroughly. And we do that with a combination of quantitative and qualitative mm -hmm. uh, metrics and data points. Of course, mm -hmm. we have psychometric tests, but, you know, psychometric tests um, um, can't be used as a as a panacea. I think there, there are some educators uh, uh, who, who use uh, psychometric tests um, uh, irresponsibly because mm -hmm. what it might do to a 15 year old is, oh my God, I'm mm -hmm. not good at, uh, I'm not good at interpersonal relations. Mm -hmm. I can never be a good manager. And that mental block stays with them for a decade and can really compromise their education and mm -hmm. their educational and professional 
goals, mm -hmm. right? So we have to be very careful and say, okay, this psychometric test is like a blood test mm -hmm. telling you right now, okay, your high density liposuction, uh, high density lipoproteins, pardon me, are, um, are low, but this is the remedy, mm -hmm. right? We never take a blood test personally. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, okay, mm, this is telling me how uh, I can improve. So that's how we use psychometrics, mm -hmm. right? Okay. This may not be a natural ability for you. Mm -hmm. but we've got a process for how you can strengthen your interpersonal intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, right. Or your, uh, spatial reasoning. Mm -hmm. So psychometrics, but beyond that, it's, it's gotta be uh, qualitative and personalized. We have written assignments for kids. We ask them things like what, see, we talk to them in a way that they really uh, resonate. So we say things like uh, what really pisses you off about society, mm -hmm. right? A lot of, you know, a lot of our, uh, uh, our uh, young girls talk about uh, uh, gender disparities. Uh, they talk about education, health, poverty, um, uh, climate change, environmental mm -hmm. issues. So we want to get a sense of what really makes them tick, mm -hmm. right? So for example, um, one young man said like, you know, I, I love football. I just mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. But recently I have not been able to play football because I have asthma that is exacerbated by the Indian air, mm -hmm. by the New Delhi air. Mm -hmm. And I don't really want to do something about mm. air pollution mm. what can i do mm. right then they mm. got it this is what really drives you mm. let's build a profile around that so we so we gave him a research paper i, I still remember he he did this amazing research in mm. which he, he compared the properties of different household plants mm -hmm. and, um, uh, in terms of removing um, you know, PM 2.5 and various mm -hmm. particles yep. from the air. Mm -hmm. So he used some meters to, to measure that. He created, he created this very nice controlled experiment. Mm -hmm. um, and he also compared the capacity of these plants vis-a-vis, -vis, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your industrial uh, air purifiers and found mm -hmm. that they're, mm -hmm. if you use the right combination, they're, right. they're, they're comparable. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing because now he discovered a solution that is mm -hmm. far more affordable uh, to the Indian public than, you know, a Dyson air purifier. Mm -hmm. So he, he conducted this research. Um, he also kind of performed this chemical analysis of mosquito repellents. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he wanted to study chemistry, he found a more environmentally friendly version. He, and not just found, he actually kind of uh, concocted his own. Mm -hmm. He identified the uh, the chemicals in, in industrial mosquito repellents um, mm. and the active ingredients, mm. tested them out, uh, tested their, you know, their, uh, uh, whether you could put them in a spray bottle, mm. how mm. effective they were, um, all sorts of uh, yep. things. This young man got in, put all of this down in his essays, talked about his journey that, you know, um, because of asthma and, and New Delhi, mm -hmm. I can't play football. This was my driving motivation to study mm. green chemistry and apply it to environmental science. Amazing. This is everything I did. This is what I learned. And this is why I want to apply to Cambridge. And he's mm -hmm. uh, studying there. Right now. Amazing. Amazing. What an amazing story. And what an amazing example. I'm sure a lot of our young people who will listen, will listen to your story about this young individual and get motivated. But Rahul, now coming to the other aspect of education, and that is the stress. I see a lot of young students or children going through a lot of stress because of what will they do after. But more than they stress, I see their parents stressed out. What is the role that you play or can play in managing this incredible stress the entire family goes through till they get what they call a good college? Yeah. No, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, uh, we, we interact a lot with uh, parents, of mm. course, and um, there's a lot riding on this, you know, parents have made so much, uh, so many sacrifices uh, for their yeah. kids. 
um, and uh, they want to see them uh, well settled. And beyond being well settled, you know, it, it's a, they want to ensure that their kids have uh, the life, um, you know, a, a, a life in which they can make their own choices. So. Mm -hmm. We, we really understand the emotions um, uh, behind uh, decisions surrounding uh, uh, education. What we tell parents is um, the, the, the child has to be the CEO, mm -hmm. right? And we're all um, on the board the of directors, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that kind of uh, relationship when the... the uh, the child, uh, our scholar, feels that they're driving this, mm. and we are all well wishers, and we are providing, you know, kind of actually, uh, or another analogy might be an entrepreneur and a VC, I mean, mm -hmm. that's because of course, you know, of course, there's funding when it comes to parents, uh, but beyond that, there is advice. Uh, doors are open. We're a sounding board. We help structure their thoughts. We help mm. organize their lives. Mm. Uh, so we understand the stress, mm -hmm. right? And, and we see as our mandate, and I think this is what differentiates Athena as well. We, we expand that mandate. Our mandate is not just, hey, if you want to get into UC Berkeley, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, and E, go do that. Mm -hmm. We, we want to remove these stressors. So if there's some philosophical um, disparity between uh, a child and their parents. We'll bring everybody together. We'll have mm. a seat in our conference room and we'll have a chai pit charcha, mm -hmm. right? Like, okay, mm, look, I I'll give you an example. Something that comes up a lot uh, mm -hmm. is uh, parents want a, a child to apply for computer science. A child wants to apply for the humanities. And we see both perspectives, right? Mm. We, we, we understand and we strive to navigate that. So what we might say is, mm. look, kid, mom and dad have a point regarding computer science, especially mm -hmm. if you're applying to the U.S. Again, it goes back to, are you a STEM student or not, right? Might be helpful. And especially mm -hmm. given that you've been doing well in computer science, you've been building your, your profile in computer science, why change to history mm -hmm. in the last moment? Mm -hmm. What you can do mm -hmm. is you can major in computer science and minor in history. Mm -hmm perfectly fine or mm. even better you can study computer science but apply it to history mm. right imagine if you could create an app uh, a platform for virtual tours of all monuments mm -hmm. across india mm. right and the the computer vision is so well developed you can create a v1 yep. with static images and then as your knowledge of computer science deepens you can you can make it more elaborate. Mm. Uh, you can um, you can um, put it in different languages yeah. and 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 build and build and build. So you are uh, building core computer science skills that can serve you in the in the job market down the road. Mm. But you're remaining very connected to the subject matter that's close to your heart. Mm. And we come up with solutions. Then like kids like okay I can do that. Parents are like okay we can do this. And wonderful. Happy. Wonderful. So, wonderful. So, so in terms of stress, number there, there are multiple causes of stress, right? Pardon me, I have a bit of a uh, no, no. Um, hope my sniffling isn't no, no, no problem. Your no. audio. No, no. Uh, so, uh, there, there are multiple levels of stress. Number one is just clarity. I think mm, having this. Oh, should I do this or that? Um, you know. What is my purpose in life? Mm -hmm. so we, we try to attack it on, on that uh, ground. But then there's also just, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, kids feeling overwhelmed. So we bring on board uh, a trained sign, uh, a child psychologist mm -hmm. who, who speak with them. So this is what we aim to be, like a, a full service coaching center. Whatever a child needs, uh, uh, we can provide both at the strategic level, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the strategic level, the technical level, and the emotional level. Very interesting. And one last question for you, mm -hmm. because you've looked at strategic, you've looked at emotional, you looked at parents' needs. Now comes the last bit, which is the funding. Do you also support a child get funding from institutions? 
Uh, so this is definitely something we take into account. So mm -hmm. we ask parents, you know, like, look, yeah. uh, what's the situation? Mm -hmm. um, uh, are, is financial aid a must have or a good to have? Right. Uh, and if, if it is a must have for some families, mm -hmm. we, we have an entire database of all the financial aid policies of different universities and which ones uh, provide scholarships to to international students. Mm. So we we folk we add the going back to how we construct colleges. Right. Yes, we we focus on those. We may focus more on uh, on Canada. Mm. We might have some um, some additional universities in Singapore and Hong Kong that more heavily subsidize uh, uh, education. Singapore has this special. Mm -hmm. Uh, policy that if you commit to staying and working in Singapore for a number of years, they they slash your tuition considerably. So we we're aware of all of this, um, and and uh, that's where you to, uh, the council. Wonderful, well. wonderful. Rahul, on that note, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. It's been such an amazing journey for me learning about Athena, what where the name Athena came from learning about Athena education and all the amazing work you are doing uh, in supporting so many young uh, you know, children, if I can use the word children, or so many young adults in uh, enabling their uh, Ivy dream. Uh, thank you for going through so much detail and giving me such amazing examples of how you have actually cleared the path for so many young people in thinking through some of the challenges. And when I was young guy, I, I know I was also, I was always confused on what I wanted to do. And I'm sure a lot of young people may be like me. But uh, thank you for talking to me. And thank you for all the amazing thing that you're doing for young people. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Ashtosh. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.